I think uh, some of these games you had these predictions, you know, for example, like Super versus Sue, no one would have voted for Super, right? Yeah. And then we had that upset, so that would be really interesting to see um, if, you know, like Kanata had, had seen something, because he has, often does see something that we don't see. Uh, now looking at the record here this year versus Terran, he's 28 and 17. This guy is a powerhouse in total. Look at how many games he's played. 172 wins, career all time in StarCraft 2. That's pretty. That's uh, that's pretty good. That's kind of a lot. Pretty, pretty decent. I mean, I'm okay with it. I'd be like, yeah, I'm we're getting close it's to 200. Acceptable. We don't have to rush it or anything. I'll be in that 200 wins club pretty soon. Yeah. Bomber backwards baseball cap bomber. That's his clan tag on the uh, on the Korean server. Yeah. Just like parting big boy. A big boy parting. <laughs> never going to sleep, never stop stream. Bomber has played a ton of games. Look at that. That is a long career. That's over 500 games. Over yeah. 600 games. He's played a ton of games, man. Uh, this guy goes to every tournament he can. His Red Bull sponsorship is possibly the best thing that's ever happened to like a player in Korea. Red Bull is really sport esports, really, really hard, uh, if you couldn't tell. Um, and they, with their Battlegrounds tournaments, the sponsorships of players, uh, Bomber in particular, they've taken a lot of interest in him and really excited they've been supporting him so much. Guys, it's time for a second TVP here at the Casper Cup 2014. Let's jump into it right now. Hero, Kim Junho versus Red Bull Bomber, Choi Ji Sung. Up here in the top left, at about 10 o'clock, in the red, the Protoss player here. It is Hero. And down at the 6 o'clock in blue, represented by Red Bull, or representing Red Bull in both cases, I guess. <laughs> it's Bomber. The power of cheese. I want to see it. Show me it. That's what that sign That's said. That's what that said. Yeah. That's also how Brendan feels, though. <laughs> yeah, I like some cheese. You know, in the past game, we saw Super versus Flash. They had a ton really, really strong just play styles that they just didn't change, you know? And I feel like in a best of five, you just have to mix it up sometimes because your, your opponent's going to know exactly what you're doing, exactly. And, you know, if you do something different, even slightly, it's going to throw them off. No. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in complete agreement with you. Um, I mean, it worked against Hero in the previous series you played, against Sorry. And uh, I don't think Bomber is going to be doing anything cheesy. I think he's actually just going to play straight up. I expect to see a similar style to Bomber than what we've seen from Flash. Uh, this is the kind of play style that ends up being pretty standard right now, in Korea especially, but we've seen it overseas as well. Um, you know, just what I've been calling the lazy boy push, people call it pull the boys. Um, we just call it that SCV pull. Call it what you want, but uh, I think the most consistent term for this uh, push is effective. Uh, yeah. And that's why we're seeing it a lot. Yeah. Finally, putting that pile on the edge of his base, sees that there are, in fact, not two barracks there. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Neither player scouting. I would never scout against Bomber, actually. And that's why he cheese you out, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't think it's necessary. Reaper Scout, of course, is, though. Uh, even against a pretty macro-oriented player like Hero, the occasional Oracle could throw you for a curveball. So you think if one of these players is going to cheese, it's going to be Hero? Actually, yeah. Yeah, I would agree with you. Do not think Bomber will cheese a single game. Not his style. I mean, I wouldn't consider, like, a Hellion Marine drop a cheese. You could see that, maybe. Um, but I don't think you're... I mean, that... That in itself is almost seems cheesy for Bomber. Puts down the Nexus here. Bomber making his own CC as well. So far we're seeing pretty similar games to the ones that we just saw, the Super and Flash. Yeah, I mean, this is the standard for TVP. That's why a lot of people really don't appreciate this matchup is because the beginning, the early game, is almost always the same. Um, 
because it's it's the matchup that is arguably most figured out in in StarCraft 2 ever. You know, the one that's it's figured the most efficient. Um, there's not a lot of variables, you know, to to worry about. You just get your scout out. You know, you get your base up, and then you start making units. Uh, those, until that pressure point, um, there's just really not a whole lot of variation. There's there's not a whole lot of things you can do to, to be tricky. But what? We called it. It's gonna be yeah. oracles. Looks like. Looks like that way. And a good spot for it as well. It's gonna be pretty hard for this reaper to scout. Doesn't look like it's headed in that direction. Yeah, he's gonna swip, switch it back towards the left. All right, Stargate, looking like it got a forward so. Okay. okay. Is he gonna see it? It's Bomber possible. did change the, the route of his Reaper. If he sees the probe, he's definitely yeah. gonna always, oh, he's, he's on track. Wow. Whoa. The whole crowd collectively just said the same thing. Wow. Do you Bomber. cancel or not, though, in this case? I say not. It's too much already committed. Yeah, I don't think you can. Mothership will get away. Mothership core, that is. You just start calling out the M core. The M core. core. Everything related to the Mothership core has a long name. Time warp, uh, photon overcharge, Mothership core. Yeah, but when I, when I hear M core, I just think of Molten core. From World of Warcraft. I know oh, yeah. I never played that game. No, I didn't play that game. But I do respect it. I think it's obviously quite a highly critically acclaimed game that a lot of people played for a long time. Reaper thought about running away, but then it shot it once more. You know, if I ever played World of Warcraft, it would only be to meet Nat Pagel, who is my hero. <laughs> <laughs> Caught one. I hope Nat Pagel is a hero in Heroes of the Storm. That would be amazing. I would only play him... And then I would just, as soon as I mastered him, I would become the number one solo queue Nat Pagel. <laughs> he would I, become Nat Pagel? Would he be? You just a, show up to the cast with like a fishing hat and a fishing pole on? <laughs> would he be a support, a carry, a warrior? What would he be? I would like to think that he whacks people with his fishing pole, but. He's probably a support, like yeah, Blitzcranky. I, I guess like, he'd be a support. He's like, ha! Caught one and like, pulls him in. <laughs> This Oracle's not getting anything done here. He's really just getting scouting. some scouting, yeah. Yeah. There's not much it can do when you get the scout off on it. Like when Bomber sees that, it's just he can he can go in there and tag some of the units. He can try to pick off some building uh, SCVs, some gas SCVs possibly. But now there's even turrets getting up. Uh oh, it's the it's the six gate here. With charge. Yeah, charge zealot six gate, sometimes with multiple oracles. We only have one so far. Nice tag. You're it, bomber. Ah. Plus two armor immediately started. These are going to be some beefy zealots right now. He's going to get Twilight Council or Templar Archives as well. Setting it up. Trying to assess how many units he has to defend because we don't have the unit tab. I don't think he has very many. That's my that's my assessment. Yeah, yeah. just a few <laughs> sentries here. Three sentries, three stalkers, and three zealots. Four zealots. And a big warp in here, but damage is being done. He's targeting quite well actually. And I don't know if this ends up being worth it because the scary thing is he doesn't really know about all the gateway follow-ups. So if he trades units here, thinking he's going to get an okay trade, and the counterattack comes from that forward pylon. This could be a disaster. He's even adding two more gates. He yeah, wants he's going all in with this one. Yeah, he wants to end the game now. He's going to have Archons. Oh, he's even getting Storm. Maybe he's not even going to do an all-in. Maybe in. he just takes a third base. Yeah, most people don't attack with Storm. They usually defend with it. Uh-oh, goodbye, Oracle. Oh! No way. <laughs> slippery -ist. Most slippery Oracle in the world. No way. slippery -ist. Slipperiest? Yeah. Most slippest? <laughs> Most slippy. What? <laughs> <laughs> There's that second starport. And, uh, is finishing up here, too, back at home. Yeah. 
And the thing is, Hero's not even going Colossi. He's keeping it. He's been keeping it Robolus, by the way. It's really interesting. That's a big variation that we've seen. Um, you know, a lot of players will, if they're going to go for this quick charge and, and storm, get one Colossus out, use only that, uh, and then switch into storm. But he's just cut the Robo out of his build entirely. He's still eat it. Yeah. Uh, and that's part of the reason why I, I think he had a lot more units than Bomber expected. He was probably expecting, ah, oh, you put a lot of gas in that Robo. You got the Observer across the map. You're not going to have any sentries. He was thinking it's probably going to be just like when Flash was playing against Super just earlier, uh, but it wasn't that way. You know, a bit of a variation here, changing up uh, the styles. Because once you get out of that early game, once you get your Nexus up, you pretty much have so many different opportunities of, of what tech you're going to do. And you don't always have to copy, uh, you know, the build that most people are doing. Yeah. So many High Templar are out already. And here, uh, Bomber, rather, has just not seen this at all. He's going for two Medivac drop here. He's going to get a pylon. And the Army of Heroes is actually moving out on the map. Nexus Cannon and some units that come back. The High Templar should be enough. Wow. Damn. We even got the feedbacks off. Those medevac drops are done. He's going for that big attack now. Off of basically an empty third nexus. And it's starting to look like a PVZ, PVZ here. Setting up the eBay wall. He's going to get three eBays. eBay is the fastest building hit point per second structure that Terran has. That's why he uses that. It's the best structure to actually make a wall with if you have the money to spend it. Really smart choice here. Little Mines in the mix as well, building two at a time. Going to be really, really good against those Zealots who grouping up. Getting a lot of hits down. All right, Storms in that Warp Prism. Got two Widow Mines, they're so important, as you were saying. And you see the Zealots actually baiting the Widow Mine shots into some of that Terran Bio, but that eBay wall, oh god, the Storms. eBay wall still holds strong. He's trying to get through, but he's struggling. Bomber holds. Yeah. Very nicely done. Really nice defense at a bomber here, but again, he has a third CC, third orbital, but he hasn't landed it yet. He's not mining from that third base, and this really good pressure at a hero is gaining him a lot of time to get a bunch of minerals and gas from that third base. He's gonna see some storm drops now. All right, he's gonna come back here and see what he can get done. There's a lot of bio there, but he's like, I can get bio and this if he's the storm drop. Yeah. Thank you, bomber. Thanks, so, Obama. <laughs> All right, there's a storm right there. Oh, that was huge. Did so much damage to the SUVs and also the army that was there. Yeah. When that storm drop was coming, the Korean casters were like so confused. They were like, huh? What? What's happening? Oh. It was just a storm drop, guys. Just a storm drop. Well, this is a big push coming out here for Bomber. He's got twice the army supply. Yeah, this is because he hasn't been spending gas out the wazoo on well, these expensive tech units. Like these High Templar, the Storms, the Bay that's about to finish. And look at all these Widow Mines he's got. He's got eight Widow Mines up here to lead the charge. With that new Radius, man, sparks are going to fly. Scary stuff. Nice splitting on the Widow Mines here. Carefully moving them forward. All right, Hero is being so patient here. Wants to get those Colossi out. Wants to get a few more High Templar. Get some good storm set up. Looks like Bomber wants to attack from a different angle, but little does he know that there is a huge Zealot warp in that's coming to his main base. Oh, he's got some units. Yeah, big reinforcements here really ready for the, uh, for the defense. But there's one Zealot still at the third base. Might kill a refinery. Killing some SCVs, that's for sure. Plus three armor, no attack upgrades yet. Upgrade the hero. These Zealots are so tanky. And they're coming in here now. Widow Mine shots, really nice hits there. The storm is completely dodged by Bomber. Other storm goes down, he moves out of it, but he's got so much bio here. Hero's in a lot of trouble right now. That armor does not apply to the Archons, actually. They only get shields. And this is looking like this might actually just end this Frost Army, then therefore the follow-up might end the game. That first Colossus is out, but it's way out of position. These storms are so far behind. He wants to hit one here. He does get an okay one, but it's not good enough. He needs better storms to take these engagements. He's just totally whiffing them. That was a nice idea with the war person to try to come from the right side, push him back, but didn't really hit with that one either. He's mixing in some Colossi now. That's going to be really nice because it's going to force Bomber to make some Vikings. Yep. Well, this is going to be an awkward situation. This third base will likely go down, but Hero has an opportunity to snipe the third of his opponent as well. Can Bomber turn around and trap these Protoss units, though? That's the question. He can save the orbital. That's easy. But these units are already starting to stream into his natural and should go into his main soon. A great choice here. Leave just enough units to kill the Nexus by themselves and then come back home. Yeah. 
units at that natural now. Bomber. Heroes going all the way in with this one. Not backing up at all. Trying to kill that CC, but taking a lot of damage in the meantime. Good storm on that little army there. And a huge storm on those ones as well. Archon's getting some good AoE shots as well. The Colossus is somehow still alive. And Hero take a big engagement. Yeah, very nice engagement there. Um, as best as you could have hoped for, I feel. These Vikings are kind of dead supply right now up in the air. I don't know what happened with all those SVs going over there. They all died. It's not the SVs to his opponent's third. That's not where they want to be. They want to be at their own third. Needs to repair that CC. So the situation here now is an insanely terrible economy for Bomber. It's about to get worse without CC dying. Okay. Wow. An insanely terrible economy for Bomber right now, uh, but a very strong army that he needs to utilize right now. He has 12 Widow Mines. He Widow Mines are not burrowed. Finally they burrowed. Decent shot there. He needs uh, to even research the burrow upgrade, I think. I don't think he got that. That would make his life so much easier. He could afford it. <laughs> yeah. There's not much anti here, anti air here for Hero. I feel like Bomber could get some really nice pot shots in those um, Colossi, and he's going to do it right now. Does have to be careful though. Some stalkers being warped in now. Oh, he's not paying attention. Taking a lot of damage with the Vikings, and now Hero's going in. He's got three Colossi here. Great little mine shots there at the end. Might even get a stalker. Ooh. 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 Got that stalker. All right, moving in now. Trying to, to get, a, you know, he's trying to do what he can with those two Vikings, but they're just, there's only two of them. Okay, now he's got some buddies. He's got four. That should be enough to actually go ahead and fight this army straight up. If he can kite well, leave the Vikings on those uh, Colossi, damage them a bit, now go try to finish them off the Marauders. Those Archons are really a big problem here. He's going to target those Colossi, though. That small groups go swinging around, just like I said, but the Archons tanking a lot here, and they're actually eliminating most of this bio force. I think Hero... But despite, you know, with the odds he was up against early on, he lost so much of his army. The economy he has, 67 to 19 probes, and his third base not even mining. Yep. Bomber's essentially on one base. You said it earlier, Bomber's base is his economies in tatters. He's just, he's way far behind. He's on 18 SCVs, not mining from a third base. Here was just totally fine. He's eventually just going to get a bigger army. This is the way this works. It is, and the Archons are going to start hitting those medevacs pretty soon. The Storm's almost ready here. The drop does get actually one of those High Templar down. The Storm is okay-ish. And look at this. Time Warp goes down now, too. Another Storm goes on this army, and that Zealot Warp end should probably seal the deal here. Nice Time Warps getting both of those armies. The Zealot's pushing through here. Some heals trying to be dropped. He's trying to get whatever kind of mineral.